Are you ready to experience the power of visual learning? Universal CPA is the leader in visual learning, and today you're going to learn about the various types of cyber attacks that could be tested on the BEC section of the CPA exam. Just a few things real quick before the video starts. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's immensely helpful for us. We also share videos once or twice a week. If you'd like to join our Facebook study groups, the links are in the description of the video. You can also sign up for a free 14-day trial in the link in the description as well. And then if you're interested in purchasing the Universal CPA course, please send us an email at askjoey at universalcpareview.com and we'll share any current discounts or promotions that we are currently running. Now let's get you on to that video about cyber attacks. With companies having very important data and information, right, cyber attacks are on the rise. And so as part of the CPA exam, specifically the BEC section, you'll need to understand the common types of cyber attacks and then be able to sort of interpret what types of controls or preventative measures a company can implement to prevent against cyber attacks. So the key common theme between all cyber attacks is that malware is inserted into a company's data or network or software, right? And so a malware is just a general phrase for malicious code and other phrases could be a virus, a worm, spyware, right? So just make sure you understand that those are basically what's being you know, inserted into a company's network during a cyber attack. So I'm gonna quickly run you through the different types of cyber attacks that you may see on the CPA exam. So let's start with a bots, zombies, and botnets attack, right? These are all related. So as you can see in the visual, basically the hacker, what they wanna do is they want to first identify bots to take over, right? So a bot is a computer, and when they take over it, well, it becomes a zombie, meaning the hacker controls it and the computer is worthless, right? They control the computer now because it's a zombie. And then what they'll do is they'll do this many, many times to create hundreds of zombies. And then they'll combine all those zombies and control them at once. And this is referred to as a botnet. And once they have the botnet all set up, that is when the mass cyber attack is carried out. And because there's more zombies, in this botnet, it's a more powerful cyber attack. So if you see any three of those words, right, bots, zombies, and botnets, think about this visual and you'll remember how the three terms are related. So now we can run through the different types of cyber attacks, and trust me, these have some crazy names. So we'll start with a phishing attack. So a phishing attack is probably the most common, and you've probably experienced this before. It's when a hacker sends you a fake email that is mimicking a well-trusted company. And basically they want you to click on an email and as soon as you click on it, well, the malware is inserted into your computer or network and now the hacker, they can retrieve your personal information, right? So that is a phishing attack. And if you see something regarding email, just think about phishing, right? Phishing for your email. The next one is called a farming attack and that is when a hacker sends a user to a fake website instead of a real website, right? So you might not even know the difference because the hacker has done such a great job mimicking that real website with their fake website. So as soon as you go to that fake website, well now your computer is infected with that malware and now the hacker can retrieve personal information from your computer or network. So that is a farming attack. Make sure you understand it. The next one is a smishing attack. I think I said it right, not sure. But this is basically when a hacker calls or texts your cell phone, right? And as soon as you click on that text or answer the call, the malware is inserted into your device and now the hacker can retrieve your personal information. So if it involves your cell phone, specifically a text, probably the most common way, that is called a smishing attack. The next one is a form jacking attack, and this is related to e-commerce companies, right? Any company that sells online. So what is the purpose of this attack? Well, basically the hacker, they'll insert the malware into the checkout process of a valid checkout for a real company. And the whole point is so that when you go to check out, you put in your credit card information, well, this virus or malicious code, it can retrieve that credit card information and send it back to the hacker. And guess what? 
Now they have your credit card information and they can use it for whatever they want. So if it involves a credit card and the checkout process, that is called a form jacking attack. The next one is called ransomware. This is one that's probably you've seen in a movie, right? Basically the hacker, they lock the user or company out of their network and all they do is lock you out and then they demand a ransom payment. So they say, pay me $5 million and I'll let you back into your network. And if not, you're not getting back in, right? So hopefully the company has the data you know, on a backup, but if they don't, well, they're gonna be forced to pay that ransom to the hacker. So if you see anything about a payment to the hacker, that is ransomware. The next cyber attack is called spyware. And just think about spying being silent, right? You're sleeping, nobody knows about it. And the whole point here is that the hacker inserts that malicious code or malware onto your computer, you have no clue, and then they constantly retrieve data information and send it back to themselves, right? And unless you identify this malware, it could go on for a long time, right? So that's why you need antivirus software that would detect this spyware. But if it's silent and it's in the background, that is going to be considered a spyware cyber attack. The next cyber attack is a supply chain attack. So think about how an application is part of an overall network. And so basically what the hacker does, they insert that malware or malicious code into one piece of the application and then it can spread across the entire network. So that's a supply chain attack. Now a distributed denial of service attack, this is probably my favorite one and I love this visual. Just think about how all of these cars are rushing towards a computer, right? They're gonna crash the computer, they're gonna be a big traffic jam, it's gonna be slow. Well, that is basically the whole point of a distributed denial of service. The hacker sends a large amount of traffic or website pings to a network and it slows down that network or completely shuts it down, right? It gets overloaded. And so that prevents legitimate traffic from accessing the network. So when that happens, a company's screwed because their network is no longer up and legitimate users can no longer access it, right? So that is a distributed denial of service attack. The acronym there, DDOS, be familiar with it, but it's probably going to be more in long form on the exam. The last cyber attack is called Trojan malware. And you've probably heard of the term Trojan horse. Well, the Greeks used a Trojan horse to infiltrate the city of Troy, right? They sent this elegant big horse as a gift to the city of Troy, but then at night, all of the warriors piled out of the horse and then attacked the city, right? So same idea with Trojan malware. Basically, you download what you believe is valid or legitimate software, but then that virus escapes and now it's infected your computer and now it's sending data information back to the hacker, right? So that's what Trojan malware is. So hopefully you now have a better understanding of the common cyber attacks that you should be familiar with for the exam. Now, I'm not sure exactly what types of questions you'll see related to cybersecurity, right? Because it's a newish topic, but by knowing the common types, I'm confident that you'll be able to figure out what the correct answer is. So reach out to me if you have any questions on cyber attacks.